What's going on YouTube? Greg here. Welcome back to the channel. So as you guys know, I have owned a lot of cars in my life, especially over the past nine years since I got my license. That's when I got my first car. So we've had 60 different cars throughout that time period. That's a lot of cars for an individual, I think. Some people do have me beat, but I saw something where the average person only owns eight cars in a lifetime. So I've done that in just this past year. We have three different auction websites for car buying and selling that I'm going to review and give my personal opinion on, my experience, because I have bought and sold at least one car on every single one of these auction sites. I've done a few cars through these sites and I just wanted to share my experience. And the reason why I'm doing this is because ever since the onset of pandemic, COVID-19, a lot of people kind of moved away from buying cars in person and the popularity of these sites have grown so much since that happened. But a lot of people are buying and selling their cars from their homes, on their computers, on their phones. You can literally bid and win and sell a car using just your phone. You know, there are no memberships, there's no licenses, there's no subscriptions required to use these sites. They're all United States based. So I would say 99% of the buyers and sellers are in the United States. The only other thing that you need to do to buy and sell a car is to basically just have a credit card to pay for the listing fees. And obviously you need to have a high enough credit limit to be able to make the deposits on each of the bids that you make when you purchase a car. But we'll get to that later on when I go through the buying and selling process, as well with some buying and selling tips based on what I have experienced to date. So all three platforms, like I said, I bought and sold cars on each one of these. These are the cars that I have bought during the past few years. A 91 Acura NSX, a 1990 Nissan R32 GTR, a 94 Mark IV Supra, 93 Honda Beat, 2001 Boxster S, and a 2012 McLaren MP4 12C. The three cars that I have sold on this site are the 2005 Honda S2000 in Rio Yellow, I think it was a 2010 Porsche 911 Turbo, and a 2011 Porsche Cayman S. So today's agenda, we're gonna go through the pricing and fees to using the sites, the website layout, the profile page, the listing process, along with the selling tips that I think are the most important, as well as buying process and buying tips. And if you stick to the end, I really hope that you do, or you can just skip to the end whenever you want. I'll put it in the timestamp in the description below. But we do have a guest speaker today. He is my good buddy, Chris, from college. We met, I want to say, 2015 in our college's car club. You know, at the time, we both had really, you know, affordable, crappy college kids' cars. We both did YouTube at the time, and we still do YouTube. So I'm going to post his link in the description below if you want to check out his channel, Pricing and Fees. So... Buying a car, bring a trailer requires a 5% buyer's fee up to a maximum of $5,000. There's a $250 minimum. So if you get a car that's, let's say $500, you're still gonna have to pay a $250 minimum on that auction. On the sell side, the seller only pays a $99 listing fee and they also offer photography services for an additional $250. And that is what they call their plus package. So it comes out to around $350. You get a listing written for you and you also have a professional photographer come out and pho photograph your car and you don't have to do a single thing. P car market also 5% 5, 5 up to $5,000 max, but they have a higher minimum buyer fee of $500. The listing fee for a car is also $99, and I was not offered any photography services through them, so you would have to do that yourself, or you would have to hire your own photographer. 
Cars and bids comes in at 4.5%, up to $4,500, and they have a $225 minimum. And another thing, selling, there is no listing fee whatsoever. So for a seller to put their car up on their site is completely free. You just have to provide them with pictures, descriptions, any issues, and that's it. You can also hire an optional photographer for either $150 for 50 pictures or $250 for 100 pictures. And like I said, the photography services are completely optional, but we get people across all different ages Not everyone has a super fancy phone or a camera, so maybe they do want to hire someone who is more knowledgeable and experienced in photographing cars, so that way you present your car as best as you can and you get the most money out of the auction. So I think Cars and Bids is the easy, easy winner here. They have the lowest buyer fee and they have no selling fees at all. So let's talk about the layout of the website, right? So when you go to the website, How does it look? How does it make you feel? Is it very user friendly? Is it not? So let's talk about that right now. So bring a trailer. I think bring a trailer's website is actually very cluttered and P car market uses literally the same exact layout as bring a trailer. There are very small differences obviously in color, but like the architecture and how the website is built, how it looks is very similar. So I'm sure, Whoever designed the Bring a Trailer website probably did the same for PCAR Market. So on the homepage itself, there are two columns or a list of the cars. So you can either filter on the bid, the time left, and the proximity to your location. Whereas PCAR Market, there's also two columns or a list of cars current auctions, however, there are no filters at all. As far as filtering the auctions, Cars and Bids allows you to filter on the most amount of options. So we have reserve or non-reserve, the current bid, the time left, the proximity to your location, and you can also sort by mileage. Now let's talk about the auction listing itself. So Bring a Trailer and PCOR Market, like I said, they have very similar websites. However, I think they're, I don't know what to call it. It's either a blog or article style. It, it makes it really hard to skim through the listing itself. When you're looking at the car, There's they have paragraphs and they're separated by some pictures and they just keep listing everything out written in a paragraph versus cars and bids makes it very easy to read, very user friendly. They have different sections of the listing, which has like the modifications, the key highlights, any known flaws with the car and what the car comes with, such as like a car cover or additional parts, how many keys. Cars and Bids categorizes everything, makes it very easy to read versus Bring a Trail and P Car Market. You kind of have to read through their writing an article, which sometimes does have a lot of fluff. On Bring a Trailer, you can't zoom in on the pictures. When you try to zoom in, it kind of just like disappears and goes back to the gallery of pictures. So I can show you an example of what I mean by that. Right, so once we get to it, we have one big picture, and then you scroll down, it has a ton of writing here. So if I wanted to find something about like any known issues, there isn't really a section for that. I have to read through everything very detailed to find that piece of information. On the right side, it does have this essentials where it tells you the location, the VIN, how many miles it has, the type of engine, paint, and such. But what kind of issues it has, we don't see that, and we have to kind of just dig through it and really research into the, the ad. But, and then we get down to the photo gallery. So we'll click on this first one here. There is no zoom option unless you hit the button, but you can only zoom in once. If you try to zoom in on your computer and try to spread it, 
it does this, which is weird. So I don't like that. If I wanted to like zoom in on this headlight, I can't. So it does that. And on P car market, you can see that the listing layout is literally exactly the same thing. So you have all the pictures, you have some videos, but everything is written out in paragraphs and there isn't a central area or categories where you can find certain pieces of data. And then if we go on a picture, you know, same thing, it lets you click zoom in on it once, but once you try to zoom in with your fingers, it does that. It just completely gets rid of the picture out of the frame. So I don't like that. Now, if we go to cars and bids, let's look at this Bentley Continental. You can see as soon as we get to the ad, it presents you with a lot of pictures. You can see exterior pictures, interior pictures. There's a total of 88 photos for this car. At the top, there is a single line here where it tells you very key information, how many miles it has. So it's got very low miles, mostly on modified, twin turbo, W12 engine, and all wheel drive. So as soon as you see that, it tells you some pretty key information already right off the bat. Once we scroll down, we have a pretty clean layout right here of all the key data, how much time's left on the bid, current high bid, the amount of bids on it, and how many comments it has. It gives you the VIN, the location of the car here in PA, clean PA title, a lot of information here. And then it gives you immediately Doug's take on the car. So this is like his basic review, except in writing. And he just writes a couple paragraphs, nothing more or less about the car itself and a little bit of why the car is special. And then we get to the highlights. So everything here is in bullets really easy to skim through. Equipment list, also in bullets, any modifications in bullets, known flaws in bullets, and recent service history. So I like how everything here is in bullets, and then at the very top, there is just like one or two paragraphs from Doug about the car itself and a quick review on it. So as a buyer, I kind of prefer being able to just find key information like the cars and bids does. So other items include in sale, three keys, owner's manual, service records, just finding out about the car and trying to vet it when you're going through all these different websites, so many different cars that are available for sale, having it this style makes it just so much easier and saves time when you're searching for cars to buy. And then they post a video, so you can watch the video. It takes you to their YouTube channel. I like how when you scroll down, everything is in big font. You know, the current bid is huge. We can see where it's at, how many views the listing has received. So it's just, I just like how user-friendly Cars and Bids is versus Pico Market and Bring a Trailer is kind of, just cluttered, they have too much going on and it makes it very hard for you to find key information. So, cars and bids, obviously, winner here again. Let's talk about the profile page or credibility of the users of the site. So all three platforms allows the users to comment and mention other users on the auction page itself. This really just allows users of the page to communicate with each other, to make comments, to just kind of make it a community instead of just a straight bid. Like eBay, there's no comment section, so you can't talk to other people and bounce ideas off each other or ask questions to the sellers publicly. So I like how all of these sites allow you to comment so that way, if someone were to ask the seller a question and the seller answers the question, anyone who sees the auction, any bidder, is able to see their response. And generally, a seller who comments a lot and speaks and communicates with the bidders or potential bidders generally leads to a higher sale price because then buyers feel more confident in the seller 
knowing more about the car and finding out any potential issues it might have. So Bring a Trailer and Cars and Bids are the only auction sites that show the user's credibility. It allows you to see their join date to the website, their total like count, their comments and bids and wins and sell history. PCAR Market does not have a profile other than a seller profile and it doesn't really show buyers previous history using the site. So as a seller and you see a person bid on your car, you have no idea anything about this person, whether or not they've used the auction site before, if they're well versed in it, if they bought any cars or bid on any cars before. Whereas Bring a Trailer and Cars and Bids allows you to see that data. So it just builds more of a community and lets people interact with each other more. So PCAR Market, they only let users like other people's comments, but there is no like total like count where Bring a Trailer and Cars and Bids does. Every person has a total like count, reputation or thumbs up, whatever you want to call it. I think Bring a Trailer and Cars and Bids has a pretty good tie here as far as profile page and like vetting buyers and sellers based on their previous history with the website. All right, so let's get to the listing process of these three auction sites. So we'll start with Bring a Trailer and the listing acceptance. Bring a Trailer typically accepts the listing within one to three days after you submit the application via email. PCAR Market will literally call you, usually from a guy named Adam. He handles a lot of the new listing applications. They will call you same day or the next day. It just really depends what time of the day that you submit the application. But usually if you submit like on a Sunday, you'll hear back immediately the next morning. Cars and Bids will not call you, but they will send you instant messages through their portal you'll also receive an email and they also accept your car typically within a day or two. So I've had some cases where they reached out back to me and we agreed on a reserve price or if you do no reserve, then you can have the acceptance literally same day or next day. So bring a trailer takes a little bit more time, not a lot. PCAR market and cars and bids, you'll hear back same or next day in most cases. Now, what actually matters? The time to list it once the application is accepted and all the information is properly submitted to their site. Bring a trailer, in my experience, take a very, very long time to list a car for sale. So if you need a car that's gone let's say in two, three weeks, bring a trailer is not the place to do that. The car that I listed, it took nearly two months from the time that it got accepted and all the pictures were submitted to getting it live on the site. So I had to keep the car, not drive it all that much during that time because I did not want to get it ruined and all the pictures of the car, I had to get it really nice and clean. So just driving the car during that time, it's kind of frowned upon. PCAR market is very, very quick to get the car listed. In my experience, when I had the car accepted, they had this, the listing drafted and submitted on their website in less than a week. Cars and bids is also pretty quick. I would say that they were also closer to one to two weeks but I actually just listed a 1993 Honda Beat. The one I bought on Cars and Bids, I'm actually selling it on Cars and Bids again. I had the car drafted, all the pictures pre-taken before the application was even done. And as soon as they accepted the listing, they already had all the pictures I just needed for them to draft the listing. And, and the car should be going live no later than tomorrow, Friday which I think is a really good day for auctions. Let's talk about the reserve prices. So Bring a Trailer and PCAR Market, in my experience, have been the ones to give me a higher reserve price on the car, which can be a good or bad thing because if you have a high reserve, then there are 
more ch there's higher chances of the car not meeting the reserve and not selling but also it does give the seller some protection who may not want to be letting the car go for a really low price where cars and bids in my experience they have been giving out lower reserve prices and sometimes a significant amount compared to what Pcor market and bring a trailer offer me but right now it's December 2022 the car market is not doing as hot as it was earlier in the year and especially 2021 so a lot of people who bought cars during that time people who have you know rare cars or low production count cars they want to see their cars still having a high value um, but in reality car prices are coming back down and maybe they don't want to face that reality so cars and bids reserve price typically is set low because they do want the cars to sell and not just go on the website and not hit reserve because having no sale does look bad and over time it will make other people realize that the values are not what they used to be reserve not met assistance so what i mean by this is when the car doesn't hit the reserve what does the auction company do to try and close a sale and make that happen even though it didn't meet the reserve so bring a trailer has a program called the make a hole so if the highest if the highest bid comes pretty close to the seller's reserve then they will mark it sold for what the highest bid was and bring a trailer has the decision to make if they want to cover that difference between the highest bid and the reserve obviously the five percent fee that the buyer pays on that highest bid has to cover that variance in order for them to still make a profit and also cut the seller a check for the difference so that's what they do but if a car doesn't meet reserve then all they do is they just give the buyer and seller each other's information if they want to make a deal post auction bring a trailer doesn't do any negotiation on your behalf and they don't even collect a fee if the buyer and seller make a deal after the sale and that is exactly what happened when I bought the 1990 R32 GTR I got the seller's contact information and we made a deal offline bring a trailer didn't collect any commission on that sale and I I feel like they do this just because of the sheer volume of cars that they have on that site at a given time is that if all these cars not not meeting reserve and they were trying to negotiate they would just need so many more resources to do that so i think they just move on to the next one because at any given time they have like hundreds of cars on their site and it's also why it takes a long time to get their cars listed because of how many cars they have and I don't think they just have enough people working for their company to handle the volume. P car market, they do negotiate on the buyer and seller's behalf. So when I was the highest bidder for the 2012 McLaren, the car actually wasn't at reserve. And the person at P car market did call me to negotiate with the seller and see what my highest price would be and what the lowest price the seller would take. And PCOR market doesn't do any sort of negotiation on the buyer's fee. It still remains at 5% at whatever price it is. So PCOR market tries to collect their commission because 5% on a car could be a lot of money, especially a MP4 12C. So instead of just letting that sale fall through, they obviously take the time to try and negotiate a post auction sale and p car market just doesn't have as much volume and cars on their site as bring a trailer does and i've been to the p car market showroom in their long island new york location and it's a beautiful showroom they have awesome cars in there i met the owner i met a lot of people who work for p car market so 
having them local to me was actually really cool. And another thing that Pcor Market does that no other auction site has is their deal tank. So when a card doesn't sell on their site, it immediately gets listed right here in their website's deal tank. A deal tank is exactly how it sounds. All the cars or products that are listed and don't sell turns into a buy it now auction. So you can either pay the seller's asking price or you can make an offer. Regardless of what happens, they still collect a commission on the sale. So instead of having that deal fall completely through, might as well put it up on the site so any other person who may have missed the auction can still have a second chance at winning that car. Cars and bids. When I was bidding on a Dodge Ram, I was the highest bidder and it didn't meet reserve. I actually received a call from someone who worked there and also tried to negotiate a sale with the seller. We couldn't come to turns, unfortunately. We were just way too far off. But Cars and Bids also does lower their buyer's fee from 4.5% to 2.5%. So they're taking a two-point hit in order to close the deal, and that is even with any negotiation if the buyer comes up or the seller comes down. So Cars and Bids really tries their best to get a sale close on their site, which I think is really good. So I would gotta say, Pcar Market's customer service is definitely very, very responsive, and they're local to me, they're within an hour drive of my location, sweet. Bring a trailer to customer service is honestly so slow. Uh, it takes literally days to weeks to get any reply out of them, even if it's a simple question. There isn't really a phone that you can call. If you do call, you have to usually leave a voicemail and they call you back or they leave a voicemail for you. But anytime I have a simple question, it always takes like three to five business days to hear back from them. And so like I said earlier, if you have a car that you wanna get rid of sooner rather than later, bring a trailer is not the place to do it because you will spend a lot of time with them in order to get your car sold. Lastly, Cars and Bids is responsive, but because they have the lowest reserve prices, there have been some times where I did not want to list my car with them because there is no chance that I would honestly sell the car for that low, worst case scenario, if it came to that amount. So I would rather keep the car than have the car sell extremely low. And whenever you list a car or whenever you bid on a car, you are 100% obligated to continue through with the deal if you are the winner or if you sell a car. So I think Pcar Market definitely wins the listing process here. So some listing tips. When you're selling a car, you want to get the most money out of it, right? And you're not going to do that by lying about the car, trying to advertise it as better than it is, because at the end of the day, it will bite you in the butt. So when you're selling a car on these sites, people can comment. People all over the world can see these auctions, and they could catch you on something. And if they find out something about the car or the seller that they're not being honest, then it's a really bad look and it basically ruins your reputation for ever selling a car on that site again. So here's some tips to not do that and remain an honest and good seller on the site. So make sure you take a lot of clear and detailed pictures as many angles of the car as possible. I think as a rule of thumb, you should have at least 75 pictures of the car, interior, exterior, undercarriage, and definitely have a few videos too. Some of these sites like Cars and Bids requires at least a startup video of the car, but I've seen some auctions where they take some pretty low quality video and the video is like shot in portrait mode instead of landscape and the videos are like 10 seconds long. Please do not be that person. When I'm trying to buy a car from you sight unseen, I expect you to have at least a few videos, different angles. You wanna have a cold start. 
you want to have a warm start a walk around of the car is really appreciated you can do a driving video either from the outside or from the inside but to get a really good idea of the condition of the car and how it runs you got to take several videos and don't do it at nighttime don't do it when it's like super cloudy or raining outside try to pick a day that's really nice and sunny so you can best represent the car and every car that I sell I go above and beyond when it comes to the pictures and videos so I don't have to do it later on when someone requests it from me or if I'm away then I can't do the video or picture at all for the buyer then that person is not going to bid as much as they would so the as far as the undercarriage picks I know it's not really mandatory and it's kind of hard to get these pictures or videos because not everyone has a lift or the car could be low but if you can at least get some pictures of like the suspension components or even like the tires the tread just to get an idea of how much rust or how much damage there might be underneath i think it's important to do undercarriage pictures be transparent 100 percent most important rule be transparent Disclose any issues that you know of the cars up front to avoid any issues later on. You can get called out on it super easily. And please answer questions and requests promptly. And don't give like one or two word answers. Like it's good if you explain yourself and provide detail every time someone asks a question, you can answer. Because this is all public. People seeing the auction will see how the seller is engaging with the audience and if they feel like something is off if they're not responding to questions or it takes too much time to get back to the buyers then that could lead to a car not selling so these are tips for being a good seller and engage with the audience early on and throughout the auction the whole time of the auction so as soon as the car is listed what I like to do is just post a comment like, hey, welcome to my auction. Uh, this is a beautiful car. If you have any questions, please feel free to let me know. I can take more pictures or videos at a person's request and get that uploaded fairly quickly. When a buyer sees that, they immediately gain a lot of confidence in the seller and know that the person is there and willing to work with you. And if you haven't sold a car on these sites before, you will know that most of the bidding occurs in the very last 10 minutes of the auction. And these auctions are typically seven days long. So if you have a car that's listed and it's not getting that many bids early on, don't worry because I guarantee in the last two minutes of the auction that there will be a bid war and there will be all these people you haven't even seen yet start bidding on the car and it can go up like 50% in a matter of seconds. And that actually happened to me when I was bidding on a car where there were no bids for 30 minutes and I bid at the last second and then all of a sudden 30 more bidders came out of the woodworks and started bidding the car up and I didn't even win. So it happens and it could actually be <laughs> kind of worrisome uh, whenever I see my car is not getting many bids in the last hour because then I start to worry. So if the reserve is not met, you can still work with the highest bidder on a deal. So sometimes if the reserve isn't met, then uh, you reach out directly to the buyer and you can work out a deal and still sell the car. So let's talk about the buying process now because there are way more buyers on these sites than there are sellers. So all three platforms do have a very similar buying or bidding standard or rule book, whatever you want to call it. Seven day auction is very standard from the day that you list it. It ends exactly seven days from the time that it was listed. It's pretty, pretty standard in this type of business. There's also no snipe bidding. So there's always going to be a bid war on whatever car that you're buying so when the countdown is in the last five seconds and it hits one like let's say somebody's internet goes out and they're trying to you know put in a bid if someone else bids 
at the very last second, it will add time to the auction, typically two minutes. So even if it goes down to five seconds or if it's at 10 seconds left or even one second, if someone bids or if you bid the minimum increment, then it will add time to the auction. So it will extend the auction so that whatever the final bid is, is the final bid and no one lost out on it because you know they they got snipe bid so that doesn't exist on these sites there are also no proxy bids and proxy bidding is if you ever bought something on ebay where you put let's say 500 dollar bid on something but the price only goes up to like 400 it's because whatever bid you put down on that site is the bid that's going to show up on the website so there are no hidden bids or anything like that. Everything is very straightforward. Whatever amount that you bid on that car is the amount that you are bidding and it's gonna be nothing less, nothing more. All bids require a credit card authorization, which is exactly the four and a half or the 5% fee of winning the car. And they do this obviously one, to make sure that the person bidding is actually going to bid and go through with the car because if they win and they don't buy the car, then they lose out on whatever several thousands of dollars it could be. And also it stops, you know, random bots and people from just putting a million bids on the car. So awesome idea. I would not have an auction website without putting money down on each bid. When you win the bid, you have one week to pay the seller unless there are other terms or agreements that you make with them directly, but the standard is to be paid within one week of auction end. And the buyer is responsible for picking up the car locally from the seller or arranging transportation for it. It is not the seller's problem to have the car delivered to the buyer in any case. So if the car is eight hours away, you better be planning to fly there and register it and drive it back or have it shipped because unless the seller says anything about agreeing to ship the car for you, then it is totally on you on how to get the car. So I want to compare the three websites now because most of you are watching this video for the buying process and which ones are best for auctions. And I'm gonna give you my most honest opinion. Bring a trailer, I would say, is obviously the most well-known of the three auctions. They have the highest traffic of buyers and sellers on the car. They have the most amount of cars available at any given time. Bring a trailer also attracts a lot of exclusive high-end cars and very high-quality, reputable dealers as well. So there are some dealers who strictly sell on Bring a Trailer and they have insanely rare and clean and expensive cars that you honestly don't see on many other sites. So I know I know a lot of dealers who just have insane cars and they only list on Bring a Trailer. So if you're in the market for like a Chiron, which one was just sold for 3.8 million last week, you're really gonna find that mostly on Bring a Trailer because it just brings in so many collectors and high-end clientele. So there's that aspect. And a lot of their cars are, I would say, vetted pretty well. Like they're not gonna allow like junk boxes or project cars on their sites. I've seen a couple before, but the chances are pretty slim. Like, I've had a car, a Miata, that I wanted to list on Bring a Trailer, and they rejected it because it wasn't up to their standard. Whereas a car like that would be more better suited for, like, cars and bids. P-Car Market has the least amount of cars available at any given time. There have been some times where I went to their site and I saw maybe only 10 cars listed. It's not surprising because... They cater mostly to Porsches and German cars. It's in the name, P-Car Market, it stands for Porsche. But they do sell non-Porsche cars. Do I recommend posting a non-Porsche on there? 
maybe not because the car that I put on there was an S2000 and it didn't sell on that website because one, Pico Market doesn't get the traffic that Bring a Trailer Cars and Bids does. So maybe not a lot of people know about the site. And unfortunately, I did have a bad experience with Pcor Market when I won that MP412C. After I had paid the seller the full amount and arranged transportation and everything through the seller, uh, the car ended up breaking down moments before the car was supposed to be transported. So like the check engine light came on, all these dashboard lights came on, and I started to get really, really worried because at this point, like my money's gone, it's in the seller's hands, what am I gonna do? I have no car, I have no ETA, I want this is gonna get fixed. And for like two weeks, I was dealing with the seller, trying to find out when the car was going to be fixed, if he could provide me receipts for the repairs. And it was just a huge, huge nightmare dealing with this. And when I tried to bring P-Car Market into it, I was kind of just left with, you know, one or two word text message answers. I would leave voicemails, I would call them. I would text them and it just seemed like they didn't want to give me the effort that I think I was owed for spending over $80,000 on a car on their website. Um, so my, my post-purchase customer support with them was not good. I'm just being very honest. On the sell side, they are excellent. On the buy side... Uh, I don't know. They were kind of biased towards the selling dealer because that person or dealer sells a lot of cars through them. So I really think that they were trying to favor the seller more than the buyer myself in this case. Cars and bids, I think, is the clear winner here when it comes to buying cars. The website is extremely user-friendly, very eye-catching, just a beautifully designed website I like how Cars and Bids brings a lot of variety of cars to the table. And not just like super high-end cars either, but they allow like very unique and cars that you won't see anywhere else for sale. And like, as Doug says, like quirks and features, you'll see cars there with swapped engines, swapped transmissions. There was a Ford Transit van with a full Focus ST drivetrain swap. There was a G-Wagon with a LS2 manual in there. There was like a Hyundai Genesis with this atrocious body kit on there. But like, that's why I like cars and bids because they don't turn away certain cars. Like they just allow anything to go on that site. And while it may not look like, I don't know, good for having quality cars on their site, it's good because all the cars that don't make it anywhere else, given the opportunity to be sold on their website. And I think it's pretty cool as a car enthusiast myself. I like cars and bids because you always find some very cool cars on there. So some buying tips, make sure you ask a lot of questions when you're actually interested in bidding or buying a car because not every seller is going to list absolutely everything they know about the car, especially if it's a used car that's several years old, if it's a project car, if it's been modified, like you have to be responsible to do your due diligence and vet the car yourself. If something isn't mentioned in the ad, just don't make assumptions and just think that the car is perfect in any other way. There could be more issues that are unknown and you may even find issues that the seller didn't know about. So ask every question you can think of when it comes to buying the car. Ask for more pictures, ask for more videos. It doesn't hurt. You might be that person that has a lot of questions and not end up winning the auction anyway, but think about it this way. You probably helped a lot of other bidders feel more confident in the car and yeah, I mean, you're helping out the community. That's why they have these likes because someone who has a lot of likes interacts with people and uses the website a lot. So 
I think it's good that people have like these user profiles and like counts because it just makes the whole website more interactive and like a community. See the car in person if possible and only if the seller is okay with it. When I'm looking for cars, I typically look for cars that are local to me. Like I can drive there and pick up the car because when you start to buy cars that are a distant away, like let's say I'm in New York, let's say the car's in California. Obviously the car will probably be a really clean because a California car, but then you have to take into consideration that you will absolutely need to drive the car back from California and fly there, or you'll need to get the car transported, which could be several thousands of dollars. So when you're bidding on a car, make sure you're comfortable with how much shipping is going to cost. And they do have shipping calculators, and there are a lot of shipping transport companies out there, but not all of them are good. I've had, I've had nightmares with shipping companies where they don't know how to drive stick. Like literally four out of five transport companies did not know how to drive stick. They were roasting the clutch. They were stalling it. They were not loading the car properly. They were not strapping it properly. So these are all risks that you're taking when you don't buy a car in person. And you can absolutely ask the seller if you can go look at the car while the auction is still going. I've done it a few times and I've learned a lot and I'm glad I did it because the car in some cases ends up being a lot cleaner than you expect. And more importantly, the car was worse than it was advertised and uh, that saves you the headache of winning the car and having to own a car full of issues. So make sure you check the, sh the shipping costs and make sure you check the car insurance costs because not every car is going to be cheap or expensive to insure. So make sure you know how much that car is going to run you in insurance and can actually be registered and inspected in your region. Not every car applies or is legal in every state. Like some of these JDM right-hand drive cars are not legal in California unless unless they've been converted to be legal. And some cars have standalone ECUs, have been tuned, have exhaust modifications, and that's not legal in a lot of states. My last tip here, check the Carfax thoroughly. And don't just look at it and check for accidents or how many owners it has, because a Carfax can tell you a lot more about the history of a car. If the Carfax shows like gaps in mileage or sudden increases in mileage or there's not a lot of mileage in between services or there's no services at all, that can tell you about how well the car was taken care of or how much it was driven in a certain period of time. If a car is in the Northeast, you kind of want to see if there are like service records during periods of time where there's salt and snow then you'll know like that car was driven in the salt and snow rather than maybe it was just a summer car. So these are all things that you can really look into as a buyer. So it is actually about that time to get Chris on the phone. All right, guys. So we officially have Chris here as our guest speaker. We got him online <laughs> and we're going to have him introduce himself. I already introduced him as my buddy from college who also has a YouTube channel and has had a variety of different cars over the past few years, but I'll give him the time now to introduce himself and we have a couple of discussion points as well. Hey guys, I'm Chris. Um, I've known Greg for a long time. We met in college at the Penn State Car Club. I'm even wearing my Penn State shirt right now, so um very fitting but uh yeah i've been through quite a number of cars uh once i graduated from college and i uh started just working professionally i started stashing money away for car stuff which i think is kind of natural for any car guy and um i bought my first fun car uh which was a porsche cayman s um i only had that car for like six months sold that um, I had an F10 BMW M5, one of the really rare six-speed manual cars. Um, only owned that car for less than a month because I just did not like it so much. Um, 
So I sold that, uh, went to an Audi R8 um, with, with uh, the Artronic paddle shifter transmission. I really liked that car. Had that car for like six months, sold that. And I had a Lamborghini Gallardo. Um, that was a really fun purchase, but a probably very bad decision to buy the one that I bought because it was one that had been sitting for a while in this guy's garage. It was like in mint condition, but like he never drove it. And uh, everything just broke on me, like major stuff, like the entire oil pump assembly failed. Um, I went through three starter motors. Uh, what else? Oh, like the the heater core assembly failed and puked coolant everywhere. And like I even refilled, I fixed it and refilled the car with coolant. And then like the AC system was messed up because it relies, on, it was all messed up. And that was only like, I think I owned that <laughs> car. I owned that car from like April of that year and I sold it in early September. And uh, for I think eight weeks of the ownership, it was in the shop. Uh, so that was terrible. That car, I spent thousands fixing it over those few months. So uh and then you spend i spent more time in the the shop than you did in your oh, own yeah. garage driving it yeah I, I there was a bunch of events i paid to like be a part of that i just couldn't go to because the car was broken so i was really mm -hmm. cool <laughs> uh but yeah so i sold that and then i went back to the more um practical roots of of porsche and i got a cayman s uh, again so um and i actually really missed the first cayman s and I, i'll say i think the, like this experience has solidified my love for Porsche. So uh, I just sold that Cayman S and now I have a BMW M3, which I'm really enjoying. It's a 2011 E90, a uh, six speed manual, great car. And um, we'll see what happens uh, in the future. Um, I'm, I'm definitely eager to get another like sort of exotic car again, but um, we'll see what, what the future holds. So, but yeah, yeah just, bounced through quite a lot of cars in, in short time span probably like two years you have and you've also owned like a variety of cars you know both low-end and high-end cars like yeah, at some point you you had the lambo you had an r8 and then at the same time like you had an 800 dollars copart <laughs> prius which you still drive right i still have that thing yeah um, I just got it today. A diesel Jetta that you're running off uh, yep. what vegetable oil? Peanut oil, yeah. I, or <laughs> it's all sorts of crap, and I broke it because I yeah I did it wrong. So <laughs> yeah, but yeah. yeah, tons of I love like little like junker cars too, and I mean I've had muscle cars too. Uh, I had I had a Mustang GT in college that I love. I, I want to get another Mustang at some point. Um, I, I've had. That other, I had an E92 335i that I really liked, but that thing broke all the time. So just, yeah, I've been through uh, like a, a number of just cars all over the place. I mean, all across the spectrum. Yeah. Awesome. It's a real car enthusiast. Yeah, definitely. Just yeah, like I you, you have everything too. So Yeah, <laughs> like I did too. I had uh, the R8 and um, like a 94 Miata all at the same <laughs> time. Bring them to the same car show. And people are like, you own both of these cars? I'm like, yeah, I actually drove the Miata yeah. here. And my friend said, the R8. It's so awesome. Like, I love people's reaction to that when they it see is. two of those cars. Exactly. So awesome. Thank you for introducing yourself. Yeah. Um, I wanted to ask you, so because of the pandemic, did you kind of change the way that you buy cars? Like, I know, you know, back in the day, everyone would used to buy cars from Craigslist or straight from the dealership, just be yep. browsing like cars.com and going to see those cars in person. Whereas now that we're looking at all these new auction sites or even like Carvana and CarMax, where you can just buy a car online and have it shipped to you, like, has it impacted the way? you've traded cars these past couple of years? Yeah, yeah, I definitely think. And I I noticed for sure, like when, once COVID hit, um, things like my own just observations, like I noticed a shift for sure. So when I bought the first Cayman that I had, it was, um, I think it was right before the pandemic, like February of 2020. So like within two weeks of that was when the pandemic pretty much hit the United States. Um, so I bought that car just from a private seller, like a totally normal, um, just like I found a guy on a forum and he was like coincidentally 30 minutes away, all the paperwork and everything was done in person. Like we test drove it, all of that was fine. Um, just like any normal car sale. 
Uh, when I sold the car, um, I remember meeting the guy to test drive it and we both showed up like with masks, like hand sanitizer. Like I was like standing away from the car while he like looked it over. It was just like the really early days of the pandemic when like things were like bad and people were, it, you know, we were a lot more cautious of things. So oh, that yeah. was, just, that was like a strange time. Um, but like it worked. I mean, you know, we, we did what we had to do and he was another, it was like, he was a local guy as well. So, um, and I think when I bought the, um, the M5, that was at a dealership. And by this point it was August of 2020. Um, that was still, I guess like fairly like pandemic E like, like people were still like doing like, uh, there's still like mask mandates and things like that. So we had to wear masks, like plenty mm -hmm. of hand sanitizer at the dealership. Um, like while we were, waiting for the car and everything to get prepped like we were in like a waiting area but we had to be seat like you know that they they staggered the seats in the waiting area away from each other so people weren't like close so um saw that and then i think from there i just kind of noticed a lot of people and i don't know if it's just me gravitating towards like certain areas of like where cars are listed whether it's like the, those auction sites um or like just Facebook groups and things, but people are, I think are just more comfortable with just remote transactions now and just remote stuff in general. So um, I don't like the R8, I bought sight unseen far away. I flew in, picked it up, drove it home. The guy who bought that car, same thing, sight unseen, bought the, like wired me the money, flew in, drove it cross country to Washington in like three days from Pennsylvania, wow. which was crazy um gallardo same thing bought it sight unseen big mistake but <laughs> uh yeah bought the car drove it home same thing buyer bought the car sight unseen had it shipped out to him uh, out on the west coast in california so just i'm um, yeah definitely and yeah recent like even recently like, more cars that i'm selling like are going through the sale like the m3 i bought was totally remote bought it from california sight unseen wired money had the car shipped to me um there's just i think way more um i don't know if it's just like just people want like speedy transactions or or what but like people are definitely um like moving quickly on stuff and they just like they just like yeah i want the car like take the money like if someone wants the car like they're just wiring you the money mm -hmm. and um the, you know it's, it's whatever so I don't know if it's necessarily the pandemic. I think part of it, I think the pandemic helped people ease into like doing things remotely. And then on top of that, combined with like the really limited supply of cars that we saw in the past couple of years when like uh, a supply chain got screwed, um, prices went up like crazy. The, the competition to like buy a car or like competing with people to get a car was really hard. So I think people were just like jumping on stuff like, let's get the deal done. Like I want your car. So, um, yeah, definitely notice like, yeah, pandemic times were really, really crazy. And then even now, like the pandemic kind of stopped in the past year or so, but like the supply chain just got even worse and more constrained. So, yeah. Yeah. And I think at the time, like people were so quick to buy cars because like the stock market too had been making like a huge comeback yeah. since yeah. you know bottom in the start of COVID, which was like March of what 2020. Yep. Is when it had dropped very low. And then by the time like 2020 and 2021 came back, like this was just like ramping up of car values and sales oh. and interest rates were really low. Like oh, I got yeah. my uh, credit union offered me 1.5% on 65 months. That's um, unheard of yeah. right now. Yeah, yeah. Four times that amount yep. right now. And then as a result, you know, no one wants to buy cars currently yeah. and values are coming back down. So yeah. as, as a result, we're seeing values coming down all across the board, you know, not just cars, but houses too and um yeah real estate everything is like jewelry too is even coming down oh um, yeah yeah because we both follow like, like the Oda watch groups on facebook which is yeah. like the holy grail of watch trading on facebook so you know even just like 
a Daytona that was forty thousand dollars earlier this year is now trading for higher twenties. Yeah, uh, it's yeah, just crazy. Yeah, it's nuts. I have an Explorer two next to me now that I definitely bought in at the peak. I've it's probably worth two thousand dollars less than when I bought it. So yeah. um, that's really nice to think about. I was like. Yeah, I should probably buy one now before they keep going up because they're just not going to stop. So, mm -hmm. yeah, <laughs> so anyway. we all had that like mindset that yeah, you know, just going to keep going up in value, and then I think definitely that was a huge factor too. I mean, it was just a perfect storm of just like all these factors just culminating in this like huge just burst of the market in general. Like, like you said, low interest rates, stock market was booming, um, people were making money. There was low supply on everything, pretty much. So, like, it was just insane. Yeah. And then I think of, like you said, that that fear of missing out. Like, exactly. Oh gosh, it's, it's not showing any signs of stopping. I got to get in, just get in while I can. So, uh, get my car while I can afford it. And maybe in two years, it'll be worth more. But now, every, like you said, everything's coming back down, which I'm certainly happy to see because I'm not that exposed right now, just having the M3. But yeah, a lot of people uh, with, with, expensive cars are probably you know if they bought in in 2021 or early this year they're probably hurting right now so mm -hmm. yeah so the it just shifted from i need to buy this car asap because the value is going up now it's i need to sell this car asap because the values wow. are going down so yeah. it has definitely shifted and um i think having these car auctions really allows that to happen because now people yeah. can just get their phones take a hundred pictures of their car and have it listed not have to deal with any person like in person and then yep. just sell their car yep. so for a hundred dollars you can have your car listed and someone will bid on it and buy it within a week so as i was telling these guys earlier like these auctions it just makes people feel more comfortable when buying a car sight unseen because yeah. of the community that stands behind these sites and also every bidder has to put down a five percent credit card yeah, authorization credit so yeah. if they're intending to bid on the car then obviously they're willing to put money down in order to secure a car yeah they're whether, serious yeah whether the, the, the car is ten thousand dollars or two hundred thousand dollars there's oh. always a credit card authorization and the sellers are providing lots of pictures lots of videos and i feel like the community pushes people or the sellers i mean to really do a good job advertising their car because yeah. otherwise they get flamed by all yeah. the all the bidders and people who aren't even bidding they just like to talk yeah, trash yeah. and try to roast the person or the car in any way possible yeah. so i bought quite a few cars on these sites and i would say every single one of them was misadvertised in some sort of way whether it be issues yeah. that weren't disclosed or just like the guy didn't even know what he was selling. So there are those risks still. And right. you will never be able to get around that without seeing a car in person, test driving it and buying it. Yes. So that's why I always say like, if the car you're buying is sight unseen or on one of these auctions, try to buy one that's a little bit more local to you to save on shipping costs. Or if it's very local to you, you can even go out and see the car right. in person. But, you know, from my experience using these three sites, I think from a buyer's perspective, uh, cars and bids definitely takes my win for just like how functional the website is, how easy it is to use and navigate. And yeah as a person who just likes to see what's out there, cars and bids just makes it very easy for you to skim through all these listings very quickly and find out like what's so special about it, what's wrong with it, what's done to it. And then if it's not for you, just back out and then move to the next one. Right. 
where it's like bring a trailer and peak car market literally make you read a whole a article to find out anything about it and right. they might even disclose what you're looking for so i don't know if you have any other opinion on that yeah. no i for sure do i mean i think like you made a really good point earlier i think what really brings value to these sites and the soul the soul value i think comes from the community around it um i mean if you think about it ebay like ebay motors has existed for probably what like almost 20 years now uh and cars get auctioned on there all the time but there's no one commenting on cars when they're when you know it's the final few minutes there just isn't that sense of like uh excitement around a car um and i think a lot of times like the the commenters will like they, they just know everything like the internet like these people on bring a trail or, or, or cars and bids or p car market like you'll see a car get listed and someone's like oh i i know this car and actually and they just spew this whole story that wasn't mentioned about the car and it's like whoa like this is a big red flag or something about this car like none of that really exists on ebay motors there's not really any drama or excitement around it and i think that definitely drums up a lot of attention just in general and helps get the word out about these sites for like where to go get the best cars and, and just, you know, keep sort of spiraling these sites into being more and more successful as more and people sort of engage with the sites. Um, even if you don't have stakes in the auction, uh, like we all, like all of our friends just watch these auctions excited just on our phones, just to see what happens and what cars sell for, which is, uh, I think that's definitely like, pretty unique like ebay motors like no one's sitting watching cars really sell on there uh or talking about it so um anyway uh cars and bids i think i agree like the ui like the way the site is laid out is very easy to navigate it's very simple like there's not a bunch of fluff which is like for me like i don't really if i'm buying a car like i know i want it like it's probably a car that i have already researched and know about i don't need like mountains of text about like default information about the displacement of the engine or you know all this like random factual info that i know like i just want to know about the actual car like what does the seller have to say about it what's the condition like have they done maintenance to it uh and what are the mods basically uh that's really all i care about like i don't need to like i know already the engine is a a four liter v8 or whatever blah 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 like i don't need all that stuff so i like cars and bids for that reason um Bring a trailer. I like too. Um, I think they have a really. I just think like their pedigree of cars is just a notch higher for sure. Uh, I've seen like cars definitely sell there. I think for a little more money. Like if we're talking about like a seller deciding on which site to sell on, like I feel like bring a trailer. Depending on the car, right? Um, if I have like a really nice Porsche with a, a very unique spec, I'm gonna take it to bring a trailer. But like if I just have maybe like a cool like 90s jdm car that's really not that like maybe not that like exciting or anything maybe it's like a toyota celsius or something or i don't know like i would i would sell that on cars and bids or maybe just like a volkswagen golf r or something like i would sell that on cars and bids um i think cars and bids is like more i don't know how to put it like just more like attainable like reachable cars for like the common man and like peak or uh, excuse me bring a trailer seems to be like the baller section right like that's where like the really high dollar stuff goes um the community around bring a trailer is way more nitpicky too like um i mean every little detail of your car will get scrutinized no, like to every degree um cars and bids i think is a little more lax uh they still have a pretty like feisty peanut gallery but <laughs> you know like i like there's definitely people on all these sites that are just not, they're just in it to comment and like just complain about something. But uh, yeah, bring a trailer, like people will scrutinize stuff for sure. Uh, P car market, um, I've looked at a little bit. I haven't really participated in any auctions there. Like bring a trailer and cars and bids, I've bidded on cars before. Um, but P car, I haven't done it before. Um, I do think P car is almost like bring a trailer, like in terms of, they just have like really long articles about cars. Um, they do get some cool stuff that I see selling for pretty low price points in a lot of cases. But um, yeah, I just haven't seen, the, it seems to be a much smaller community there and like more um, more like 
quiet, I guess. Like, I don't feel like many people are really like looking around on the car market. Uh, like, there's usually not that many comments on auctions. Mm-hmm. Um, there's not too many cars available at any given time. But, um, like, of course, you know, Bring a Trailer has, I mean, tons of cars, like, like by far the most cars of all the sites. Cars and bids usually has a good amount of cars too to, to sort through too. So, awesome. but yeah, I think that's sort of my take on just off the top of my head, at least. Yeah. So, you know, as you were going through that, I was thinking in my head, I'm like, I have the same exact thoughts. You know, I 100% agree with you that bring a trailer has brings like the craziest high end quality cars. Yeah. And even like, there are some dealers that just have insane amount of clout on bring a trailer where they specifically yep. exclusively only sell those kind of cars on bring a trailer. So like a couple examples, there's 1600 Veloce, which is a dealer near me in New York. And they just sell like pristine examples of very rare collector grade cars. Oh, yeah. And then there's cultivated collector which is also in Connecticut over here. And they just did that huge, like 20 JDM sale that one week. Oh um, yeah. yeah. And PCOR market did something really cool over the summer where they, I think listed like 10 different individual colored. M3s. That was so cool. All yeah. at the same time. So you don't really see that on cars and bids. Cars and bids is more just seems very like, transactional where every car doesn't really build up a person's like history as far as like sales yeah go. yeah i agree with that it's it seems just more like casual it's just like mm-hmm. hey here's some cars for sale bring a trailer is like like you said like they build up a story and it, that's like where that's where like story cars go like the really wild specs the high dollars stuff that like drums up attention i feel like yeah it's almost it's yeah. almost like the Barrett Jackson, but for open to anyone on yeah. the internet. Yeah, I totally agree. And I, I don't, that's not a day to get cars and bids either. I think I kind of like cars and bids for that reason too, just having it be like, like I bid on a couple cars there and I'm like, all right, like it's just a chill like auction. Like there's not a bunch of noise in the comments and stuff distracting. And it just, I know it's like, I don't know. It, it like, it seems more like just, just average people selling on cars mm-hmm. and bids, I guess. Um, yeah, it's I almost as if bring a oh, trailer is more like intimidating to like even make a comment. Because yeah, I don't out there might try to bash you because of your comment. Whereas like on cars and bids, there's just people who just want to be there to see how the car does. Um, right. Yeah. Like if you want to see a project car or a manual swap G wagon. You're only going to find that in cars. Yeah. You exactly. want to find a Bugatti Chiron, you go to bring a trailer. trailer. That's just the way it goes. But, um, there's one thing I mentioned earlier was like, bring a trailer just takes way too long to list a car and no. even to answer your questions that you email them. You're waiting days at a time, sometimes weeks. And to get a car listed, it takes a couple of months. Whereas cars and bids and P car market, you can apply put your car in right now and then tomorrow they'll accept it and a listing will be drafted within a week so nice yeah pros and cons trade-offs you know getting top dollar for your million dollar car you have to wait it out yeah yeah i think it's um, i mean now especially with people trying to sell quickly um I don't know. I'm, I wonder if we'll see more of a shift to to, to cars and bids just because people are kind of like, hey, I really want to sell this quickly instead mm-hmm. of waiting two months for it to list. Who knows where the market will be then? Exactly. Uh, so, um, yeah, I think that's that's really where those sites have their leg up in general uh, and how they sort of came to fruition. I think people just like Doug DeMuro and whoever started P-Car Market are probably like, hey, uh, there's way more room in this market for people to take advantage of these sales. Uh, and I'm sure they know or knew how much the backlog was at bring a trailer. Mm-hmm. So uh, they probably took advantage of that and we're like, all right, well, let's steal some of that. Uh, you know, that pool. Exactly. So that I think concludes our discussion today. Um, I want to thank Chris again for being able to join this and taking his time to share his insights. Yeah, 
but he does have a YouTube channel. I will post his channel link down in the description below. And you guys go subscribe and check out his channel. Thank you. Thank you, Chris. Yeah, anytime. Thanks so much. Conclusion. This was a long review, and I actually had more to say than I had anticipated. But I'm going to keep it short and sweet. Cars and Bids definitely takes, in my opinion, the win for the best of the three options. Just because of several reasons, actually. One... I like how their website layout is done. It is super clean, very easy to navigate, and it's very easy to skim through the information and find out a lot about the car in a short period of time. I like how eye-catching the website is when you go to the carsandbids.com, it brings you directly to the auction homepage instead of full of clutter and news articles and events that honestly I don't care about. I'm there to buy a car. I want to see the cars. So if we're going to, you know, cars and bids, as soon as we get there, we have just a list of all the cars ending soonest. And it tells you in one short sentence, usually very key information, the mileage, no reserve right here. If it has a reserve, then it doesn't have this blue box, but it's just such a clean website and Every time I go through here, I'm just so excited to, to read through it and see what's what's new on the page. They have the lowest buyer fee. They have no listing fee. They're very responsive. They get cars listed in a week. There are literally no cons to cars and bids, I gotta say, besides the fact that they offer the lowest reserve when you're trying to sell a car. And... Besides that, I can't think of anything bad about cars and bids. They just, they have a good amount of cars listed for sale at any given time. It's not as much as Bring a Trailer, but that could also be a good thing because Bring a Trailer has so many cars, I'm not going to sit there and scroll through like 400 cars to look from. Whereas on cars and bids, I go there, I check out their auctions. There's maybe, I don't know, I would say 50 to 100 cars listed at a given time. So I can get through that list really quickly. And why this matters to me is because I like to trade cars a lot and often. So like the Honda Beat is going back on sale on Cars and Bids tomorrow. And I've had it for about a month and a half and I bought it from Cars and Bids. So you can't do that with like Bring a Trailer because Bring a Trailer takes two to three months to get a car sold. So I don't have time for that. So I don't think I will really sell a car on Bring a Trailer unless like it was sitting through the winter and I had it listed in the spring or if I had like a really high profile car where I wanted top dollar for it. Because Bring a Trailer is really known for getting the highest amount of money for a specific car. Like if you were to list the same car on Cars and Bids or P-Car Market, I think usually you would get more money if it was on Bring a Trailer just because of the kind of audience it brings. But that is my full and honest review of these three auction websites. I do hope that you learned a lot from this and I appreciate it if you stuck through the majority of the video and especially for our guest speaker, Chris. I hope you enjoyed that. So if you liked that video, smash that like button and subscribe if you haven't already and I'll see you in the next one.